I want to introduce uh, shortly my background that you understand the perspective I'm coming from. I'm the head of a training institute in Germany who is doing training for organizational developers, for organizational coaches, for supervisors, for leaders, for HR people in companies. And we do two year programs. This means 12 times three days to train professionals who are already in responsible roles as freelancers or as internals in companies. And most of the big international oriented German companies are our customers and over and over again send their specialists to us to get trained to develop organizational culture in their organizations. So, people coming to us are always in touch with the hardcore business and they have to contribute uh, attitudes and human attitudes and culture to business. So, they wouldn't have their positions and they wouldn't have been sent by their companies to us unless they themselves and their companies have any idea uh, that she really, they really can have a profit from that. So we do a whole, we have a whole variety of concepts and learning approaches on our learning island, how I call it, and we totally feel responsible for the uh, complexity of the responsibility uh, of an entrepreneur putting things together. We uh, do not feel that we can afford to blow up a special perspectives that cannot be integrated in the everyday business. Uh, today, my topic is mental images and performance in professional and organizations. And today, I focus on the question, what do we need besides techniques, besides learning culture, uh, to accomplish all this, uh, to enable a person and an organizational culture to do meaningful things. We strongly believe that if somebody has a complex task to fulfill, uh, this person is not able to do it for a long time unless the soul is touched by this work. And the, the tendencies of the souls are integrated into understanding their professional task and how they spend their life while they are working. So uh, we introduce uh, to our participants uh, the meaning of the background influences of their soul and they get interested in how to dialogue with that, but it's not easy to dialogue uh, with your soul, as you can dialogue by phone to someone else. So certainly we need intuitive understanding, we need narrative approaches to do so. And one way, and this is a part of our training, is that we give people a chance uh, to experience their narrative capacity, because many of them think uh, their narrative talents uh, should not be integrated in their professional self-understanding. They think storytelling is only something they do at the bedside of their children in the evening when they go to bed. Or they would not expect that uh, dialoguing on dreams somebody has, maybe after uh, specific professional events, could contribute anything to understand uh, how they experienced it and how comes that one day they can contribute to it in an excellent way and the other day somehow nothing does fit right. 
And we also meet people that come to our training who somehow lost meaning in life, in professional life. And uh, they hope by getting more instruments and more knowledge, they will get back to finding meaning. But this, this might sometimes be the truth, but sometimes it's not. So we developed uh, approaches that help people to dialogue with their soul, with what is touching from their history and what their soul is dreaming of. Before I give you uh, a taste of it, I only can give in that short time we have now uh, a taste to you, but in the book that is brought out, um, there's written more and there is also our website. And if you are interested, we are a very sharing uh, company. On our website, you find a lot of material in English, written tapes, videos, charts, and everything is free. It's not a commercial purpose on that. So you are invited, and especially students who are here who cannot travel to us, uh, can travel by internet to all our material and share our culture. So I developed this um, part uh, of our uh, culture and of our program. Uh, it started almost 40 years ago. I was a student counselor then at Heidelberg. And I just had learned some counseling techniques like dialoguing, questioning, and all that what we learned at that time to help students who got into some kind of crisis during their studies. But after some time, I found for some of these people, this didn't help at all. There have been many students who get stuck. Pardon? Ah, they have, somebody wants to talk to me? No. Okay. They have been uh, students who, are, who got stuck um, doing their uh, written works, who prolong and prolong their studies without really coming forward. And they came to our counseling center and they also believed maybe they have the wrong techniques or not, do not have the right concepts to do their studies right. But it seemed to me that somehow they lost track. They looked somehow like puppet on a strings where the strings have been cut. And I felt like uh, they should again get in contact what their studies and their life goals uh, should have to do uh, with their actual work and only if does make any sense to her, their soul, then she could be in, invited um, really to get more competence to do that effectively. So I've just uh, had in the United States a course on guided imagery, was what was new to me and uh, got more ideas about intuition, so I experimented a bit. And one afternoon I had five young men sitting in my office and I tried to find out questions that helped them to get in contact with their soul, what is really meaningful to them. And I started with the question, when you were young, maybe a child or adolescent, what was it, what was somewhere in your mind what sometimes will be your profession? What will you be when you will be grown up? You hear my voice? So I studied with Milton Erickson at that time. This was a legendary uh, hypnotherapist. And I learned to do, change my voice in a way that you are invited parallel to ask the question, uh, yourself. So, when you were young, when you were a child, what was your image of what you will be at that time? 
And I, as I remember, I had five young men sitting there, and four of them said, train conductor. So this was interesting, but I was not sure whether this will give us any help to get further individually what makes meaning to them in life. But only one question further gives you a totally different picture. I said, can you please give me one situation, one picture, one image for what the major thing will be in future when you will be a train conductor, con conductor. And the first one said, oh, my engine and me. Nobody knows my engine as I do. The next one said, my fellow train conductor, two guys traveling around the world. The third one said, all these people in the drain behind me trust me. I will do everything I can to give you a safe trip. And you probably immediately understand something, what is important for them for professional life and what should be somehow connected with their organizational role and the everyday uh, moments of organizational work because there was a dream of the soul that this would be a part of the essentials in professional life. Uh, the fourth one said, it's for me, it's Orient Express. I'm train conductor in the Orient Express. And I welcome all these famous people traveling with us. He was a Romanistic student already studying eight years and an end was not to be expected. So I said, oh, how is your study going? He said, mm, yeah, I don't know. That's why I'm here. And, said, and I asked him, so, and what is life doing besides that? He said, oh, I have a, a good job to earn my money for studying. And his eyes were glowing. I said, what is your job? I said, I am greeter, greeter in the Grand Hotel. The one who, uh, as we have these people here who say goodbye to you, to the famous people who come in there. You immediately understand why this position uh, makes meaning for this person. And he had no idea how he could get this kind of meaning by going further with his studies and finish them up. So later on we did some work where so he had some idea uh, where he will work someday, where these qualities his soul is touched with can be integrated. And this uh, gave him back the understanding it's not the content uh, that will make meaning, and it's not the job, and it's not uh, the formal uh, attributes of, of the job, and it's, uh, and it's not the money will, which will give him uh, meaning alone. It's also that there is an interaction with images of the soul somewhere in the background, and this is why we are interested not only with those students almost. 40 years ago, but uh, also today with all professionals, while they are improving excellence, uh, make sure that they are in dialogue with their own soul. And usually you cannot be in dialogue with your own soul unless you are in dialogue with other people sensible to images uh, their intuition uh, indicates behind yourself. So we also had for learning cultures where people talk to each other what images come up in my mind when I'm in contact with you. These images, images certainly tell something about me because they are my image, but they are also same, 
probably something about you. And when we dialogue on that, you are at least inspired to get ideas about images about you. And these images usually are not so much conscious. But unconscious does not mean not, accept, not accessible. And so we developed very easy questionnaires and structures of interviews to invite the other people to elicit these images in the background of their world, focused on questions of their professional life or focused on questions of their organizational life. You shall certainly can use this approach also to focus on questions on your private life, how to get old, how to deal with sexuality, how, how is your understanding of family, because always I believe that um, out of the millions of images that you met in your life, your soul, whatever it is, selected some. And it's the reason why your soul selected these, and they have importance to you. Not always positive importance. Sometimes it's always also uh, problematic importance. And we have to do with questions like this, for example, in, in trauma therapy. But it's at least uh, good to dialogue with them. And then if you have other people who also know to dialogue in this way, they can help you to sort out which images are important and to their understanding really matching me and which images might be have a problem in that. So, and I cannot do this uh, here now to show you how this interview goes, uh, but we are asking questions like, uh, what have been the images when you have been a child, what you will be, and what is one situation, one picture of one situation, we reduce that very much, um, that could be an example for that. And then we ask, for example, focused on profession, who in your family is coming to your mind that somehow impressed your soul? And then this might be, oh, this is a grandfather, the father of my mother. He was an engineer, and he was a scientifically oriented engineer. And I loved how uh, um, differentiated he did everything. He was very much correct. And I, I didn't think of him for many years, but now I think somehow he is one of my major models. And this guy I'm talking right now uh, of, he has a business based on his engineering uh, knowledge. But this business uh, is stuck because he doesn't know how to sell things. And as we go on, I ask, for example, is there another image of somebody concerning profession in your family? And he said, for a moment he looked down and he shaked his head a bit. And for this, it's good you are trained as a psychologist. And I said, oh. And then he said, I don't know. Then take this image you already had just now. And he said, oh, yeah, no, that, that's, that's his uncle in our family. That's the brother of my mother. Uh, he is somehow the black sheep in our family. I said, what was he? Uh, he was a, a market tender. So we have been a, a serious academic family, and he somehow uh, was not part of this kind of family. And so I asked him, what, he was a market tender. Can, uh, let's look at his life as a market tender, and we have make a film out of it. And this film is played in a movie, and we have only one uh, snapshot of one situation out of that film. How would that be? And he said, oh, OK, see, he is standing on a box on a free market, and he's yelling loud and catching everybody's attention. Uh, and I feel ashamed when I see that picture. I don't want to have that. He said, oh, but this guy might have the talents you need for, to improve your organization, because 
marketing and getting acceptable attention is what you're lacking of it in developing your organization. And you hired many consultants, but somehow you did not get further with that. And this might have to do with that your soul does not integrate this part of your historical images into your talents. Because he didn't like the image, but it was there. It's important because it was not lost out of millions of images. And his intuition helped him uh, to select these images from the many thousands there are there. Uh, at this point, he only excluded it because he didn't like it. And so, following that, we did some work to integrate, to understand this is a person who should probably be more respected in the family because he has talents, others do not have. And if you could accept that this is a relative of yours too and, a, and an ancestor, then you are entitled to take his talents, which are in your genes anyway, and integrate them in your mental understanding of competence and orientation in life. And then you feel from your soul support to integrate all these uh, marketing aspects you also have to integrate from the standpoint of an organizational developer to develop your company. So this was is one of the examples what you can do with this kind of work. So we developed uh, also exercises how people in our training group can question each other about those images. And we also integrate this with a, a kind of dream work you can do without being a psychologist. Um, it's not interpreting somebody's dream, but just understanding these dreams as images and reacting with the images that come up within yourself. So dialoguing uh, on these fears to help people to get connected with the power in their soul and even and sometimes there are even some images that are not there in the family, not in the milieu they are coming from. Uh, since the others have some ideas what kind of qualities do you need to add now in the times now in order to do the complex work you want to work to do. And then they might be helped to find models and sense dialogue with this model in a mental way in order to integrate their power and their talents into their own range of images and mindsets uh, in order then to have a good mental basis for developing uh, the strategies, the official professional strategies you have there. And we also can uh, use this kind of uh, dialogues to improve organizational culture. Um, competence of somebody within an organization does not only have to do with his personal talents and orientations and the quality of uh, dialogues with his or her own soil, soul, it has also uh, to do with the matching to the culture of the organization. So competence uh, is not only role competence, it's also understanding the context, the game and the system, and whether this matches. And this matching can be uh, made better, or it, it can be gained in the beginning, you are enthusiastic to work in that uh, organization, but after a while when you experience how the culture of this organization is, you might feel that many things are not fetch matching. Then you think maybe it's a question of your own competence, or you try to make compromises, and that's okay certainly too. But after time you might do quite well, but more and more you feel so exhausted on a deep level. And this might have to do because uh, of the matching of the culture, of your personality culture, 
and the culture of the organization is getting lost. And this is a natural thing, but you sometimes do not understand it because your competence, your official competence has gotten better. And still your competence, your performance is going down because this matching, matching is fading. And then people do not know how to get clarity on that. They think they need more training or they, need, they think they need a better position in career or whatever. So they, are, they do not have a qualified way to look for what they need. And within organizations, it's in a, in a team, for example, somehow the meaning of the team, the purpose, the soul of the team gets lost. They do not know how to talk about how to, to get it back. So in, we invite them in dialogues like this. And for example, we do a guided imagery on this matching. And this guided imagery might go this way. Imagine an organization you work with or you work for. And if there might be ma many, then choose one, please. And being oriented to this organization and some situations of encounter with this organization, I invite you into finding pictures or symbols of your own and of the organization and just putting them side by side to gather some information, not to come to quick solutions. And then the question is, remember your history in relationship to this organization. Is there a picture about you in past past might may be two years ago, maybe 20 years ago, that can be different from case to case. And now I give you a frame, and if you find a picture, put it into that frame, me in the past. But, and certainly you, you changed. So we have a second frame, you at present. And let yourself find a picture oriented to the encounter with organizations, me at present. And then the third frame can be filled with an image about me in future. And certainly this, this doesn't work uh, for everybody immediately, but in, it invites into dialoguing. In, it invites into searching processes. Sometimes the major images come up later. So now we have three more frames to fill. This is a frame about the organization you are oriented to in the past. Do you have any picture of that organization, any symbol? And then you can find a picture for this organization at present and also fill this picture into the frame. And then you can find a picture for how you see this organization in future, and then fill that. And if this goes this way, there's a little dialogue uh, around that, then you have, in the end, six pictures. Three for yourself and three for the organizations and they are filled with some kind of narrative job, uh, stuff of images. And then you, you can fantasize yourself around this, what this can tell you. And if you do it in small groups with people who are already trained with this kind of dialects, they find out what comes up within them and give you feedback on that. And so a multi-layer uh, interrelated dialogue starts that helps you to understand meaning and to search for more, more meaning. And because this is not done separately uh, in an esoteric uh, group, but in a group of learning professionals 
who are very closely in contact with hardcore uh, economy, business and professional work, they immediately, uh, it, uh, this means one, it will not go anywhere, but if somehow it gets focused back on how can this organize performance and development in performance, what is really fitting me, certainly from the perspective of everybody else, and you get a variety of offers, but I firmly believe that your soul will understand if somebody hits a, an important point. And somebody, some, sometimes see, see, people see things in me and have associations to my associations on these pictures uh, that give really a wonderful intervention, that give me an idea of something that was in me but I've forgotten. Or, you know that feeling, uh, if something is really important, it feels at the same time as new and is as if you ever knew. And this kind of dialogues are parts of our professional training. And this is what I wanted to give you a taste of. And finishing it up, I tell you a short story because I left out right now um, um, crucial uh, key, key events in your life that also uh, influence your professional development a lot. And this is a story from a conference like this. It was in the United States, um, I guess 10 years ago. And I did a guided imagery around those mental images I talked about right now. And there was a famous US colleague sitting there and after we asked for sharing, he had a deep sigh. <sighs> let, him, let us call him Peter. And I asked him, Peter, what are you sighing about? And he said, oh my God. There came a memory to my mind uh, that I've forgotten for at least the last 30 or 40 years. This guy was a management coach, to tell you that in advance. He said, I come from a small city in the United States, and my father was the doctor in that city, town, you better say town. And we also had one big factory in that town, and the town lived from that factory. And one day, the boss of that factory, the owner of that factory, got crazy and he ran naked around the town. And nobody did know how to deal with that. So they called my father. And my father did not either have an idea how to deal with that, but because he was the authority for everything that was not normal, he had to do something. And the problem was how to get this person caught somehow and back on a, some kind of functional track without blaming this person, without this person should lose his faith. And somehow my father did manage it and people have been very grateful to him. And then he sighed again. And I said, what are you sighing about? I said, it, it's this moment it came clear to me that probably this is what I am doing since 30 years. And why not? We need something like that to have a purpose in life. You are lost if you do not have <laughs> events or images like that that tell you what is meaningful to you. As, because as if we heard this morning, everybody has his own world, his own meaning life. And somehow you have to create a story that gives meaning to your life. And we are offered so many success stories and fashionable, fashionable stories that do not meet our specific way of being, our soul, our context, our tradition, and all these things, that we should learn to 
develop our stories or further develop our stories, getting in contact with the images and experiences so far our soul has selected out of the millions of possible images and experiences and put them together with others who know the world now, who know the job. Do, do not just tell us any mythological, any mythological uh, Pur um, proposal, but understand how this could be connected to functioning um, in performance and as a professional. And so this is the way we integrated uh, images of the background and we hope so that we in uh, integrate the influence of the soul to our actual functioning as professionals and the culture of organizations. I thank you for your attention. <laughs>